Okay, I'm going to show you how to do some simple audio filters. Uh, one of the most more useful ones is the low cut or high pass filter uh, in order to cut out that low rumbly sound of wind noise. You know, when the wind blows in your mic outside and you hear, or, you know, um, in order to get rid of that, you just have to cut out the bass or only allow the high frequencies to pass through. So, in order to do that, here is an example of uh, some bad wind noise. Uh, one thing to note is always best to get it right the first time. If you're using a shotgun mic like the Rode Video Mic, it has two settings, on and then the, the uh, low cut filter, um, the high position on the switch, and uh, that will help cut out some of the bass. Uh, in this case here, I had that turned on and it was still too windy, so take a listen. Uh, hopefully you can hear it well. Uh, Isabella and Elizabeth and myself, we lost uh, my husband John, the girl's dad. So it, it's, you may not be able to hear it too well, but there's a there's quite a distracting rumble there. So I'm going to drag this clip down here like this. And uh, notice here, there's two channels left and right. This mic wasn't on, uh, or actually this mic was somewhere else and nothing was going into it. This channel here, the right channel, uh, is the main microphone. So just so you know, that's why it looks weird. All right, so we want to apply a filter to this. In order to do that, uh, there's multiple ways, but uh, I like to go here to Effects, and here's a whole list. We go to Audio Filters. There's a bunch of filters in the Apple folder. We want the Final Cut Pro folder. Scroll down to High Pass Filter. Now, just so you know, uh, a high pass filter is the same as a low cut filter. You're either cutting out the base or you're only allowing the treble to go through. They're, they mean the same thing. So um, we take the high pass filter, we click on it, and we drag it down onto our audio. Now, if we double click on this clip, go here to filters. Now you can see, look, there's the filter has been applied. Now, uh, it, it, it appears to set at whatever the last time you used it is what it'll set itself at. So the last time I used it was 650. Um, the way we can preview this now, like if we just move our playhead down here and hit play, uh, Isabel and Elizabeth and myself, we lost it sounds a bit better. We've, we've cut out the bass. Now, um, if you want to play with it a bit, again, uh, deep bass is kind of uh, 20 to 120 hertz. Um, the mid range is, you know, 120 to 2000 or whatever, and then above 2000 is very trebly. So, as an example, um, we can play with this filter while uh, we listen to it. So, we move our playhead to the beginning, we hit play, uh, and as she talks, and myself, we, lost, uh, we can slide this. Now, if I turn it up all the way here to like 9000, uh, so you can hardly hear her. It's very tinny. That's because her voice doesn't only falls within a certain frequency range, and if we're cu if we're only allowing frequencies above 9,000 to pass, well, it, it's going to be very faint because hardly any of her voice falls in that frequency range. So, um, we'll go back to the beginning here and we'll hit play, uh, and we'll slide this. So you see, e even at 400, we can still hear that that rumble. So, and we'll go back to the beginning here, hit play. Uh, And about 650, where I had it before, about 650 is is right. If you go too high, they're going to sound really tinny, and it will be more distracting than the uh, the wind noise would have been. So you want to find a kind of in between where your your the wind isn't as distracting, but the person still sounds kind of natural. So I've now applied this filter, and I've set it to there. I preview it again. And it, it sounds a little better. So that's how you do the filter. Now, um, let's say this was taken from here. This is say a five-minute interview, and then I snipped out thirty seconds. If I was to say go from here, oh, undo that. Let's say I wanted this clip now to be here. What am I doing here? Let's go back to our clip. Double clip. Double click there. Let's say I wanted a new. This is a five-minute interview. Let's say I wanted to go from here. To here is my next quote that I want. Drag it down. Well, I'm going to have to apply that filter again 
to this clip and you know that can be quite annoying having to do it every single time. There's a way that you can apply a filter to a video clip before you even start uh, cutting it up and I'll show you how to do that. Let's go back to the beginning. In fact, let's close everything. Do I want to save? No. And let's reopen this. I'll just go here to Final Cut, Open Recent, and of course it's not there. Bear with me. Do do lemonade, lemonade, lemonade cancer. Okay, here we go. So we're starting back at the beginning. I have this clip here, number 13, and I know that there's no filters on it and it's bassy all the way through. And I want to cut out the bass for this entire clip so that I don't have to be doing it for all the individual clips later. To do that, I, you know, have, have double clicked, I have it open. And see here under, under filters, there's currently no filters. To add a filter, I would go here to Effects, High Pass Filter, and rather than dragging it down here, there's nothing down here, I would drag it over onto this clip. See, or I could have had it on filters and dragged it over to filters. So now this, this filter has been applied. I, I know that I want it to be at 650. You'd have to probably play with it to find what it was. But see, now that I've, I've dragged it onto my whole clip that was here in the browser, now this entire clip has the filter applied at 650 hertz. So, you know, if I have from here to here, I can drag it down, go back, say this was my next quote, drag that down, and now both of these clips down here have that filter already applied to them. This also works very well for um, video filters. Let's say you have a five minute interview with someone and it's indoors and it's very dark. Well, it can be a lot of work if, say, this was a five minute interview and I chopped it up into three different quotes. You know, having to apply the filter to every little clip down here at the end takes a lot of time. If I know the light stays consistent all the way through, then I could, again, yeah, I double click on my original clip. I would go, you know, have my filter selected here, go to effects video filter, color correction, color corrector, and yeah, see here's my color corrector tab now. I can, you know, say I want it to be brighter, turn up my whites and turn up my saturation and maybe make a little more contrasty. See, now that f this color corrector filter has been applied to my original clip. So every time I cut out a snippet out of it, see, that filter's been applied. So that is how you can save yourself a little time later, but of course it only works if the clip is consistent all the way through. So that's how you apply uh, audio filter and a video filter.